you so much for that precise introduction. A oh, very warm welcome to all the panelists. Uh, today has been a day power packed with back to back technology talks. Uh, when it comes to the topic, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning have disrupted the business economy and startup economy in a big way. Uh, but I personally believe and I'm keen to acknowledge the human intelligence, the real intelligence that goes behind uh, making this smart technology happen. Uh, I am here to acknowledge and appreciate the innovative thought processes, also the clutter breaking approaches that goes behind this smart technology. So we are here to discuss and uh, let's dive deeper into the discussion. Is it just the buzz around the buzzwords or we also deep dive into the discussion to decode how well artificial intelligence and machine learning are performing in their respective sectors. So when coming to your respective companies, I would want to understand how uh, companies are embracing smart technology, AI and ML. Uh, if I can start with Saurabh first. Sure. Um, so um, it's, it's definitely not just the buzzwords. Uh, you know, um, so machine learning and artificial intelligence, I think, you know, in, in very simple layman terms, let's understand it like that. Uh, machine learning is your ability to absorb knowledge, uh, your ability to absorb information. And intelligence like human intelligence is about taking that knowledge and making decision making uh, easier or faster or uh, any of those uh, adjectives that you can put with decision making. Um, there are so many use cases that I think, uh, you know, where wherever there is a paucity of uh, humans uh, being present or uh, decision making to be done in a split second uh, or decision making to be done in a very rule based manner. I think artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, kind of create the future for for these things to happen uh, and these things to be realized. Uh, talking about our industry, and that is agriculture, uh, very rooted to the ground. Um, Praman is a spot exchange for uh, horticultural produce. Uh, we use machine learning algorithms to understand surface quality of the produce, which allows in turn for the buyers and the sellers to transact digitally, which in today's world, or at least before technology like this existed, was absolutely physical. Right, which created a lot, lot of distrust because the buyers would not agree upon, I mean, if you are a remote buyer, you would not agree with what the seller has to sell you because you've not seen the material and therefore all the distrust. But using machine learning, you can now digitally present things which were hitherto not possible. So these are the use cases that, you know, and if I'm sure if I can find a use case for agriculture, uh, there are industries and use cases, you know, whether, whether it is education or uh, uh, the web three or uh, metaverse where these applications will really disrupt the future and shape the future. If I've understood it well, uh, you are saying that earlier it was happening in totally a traditional transactional model, but now smart technology is enabling this to take place in digital world. Uh, I would want to know more about the challenges you face uh, when it comes to uh, reaching to the deeper regions of the country. We will come back to that later. Uh, can I come to Rohan to talk about how your company and you as a leader uh, embracing technology and smart technology? Sure. Thanks, Desham. Uh, so Saurabh has already, I think, given a very good articulation of how to define ML in general. So I'll jump to the use case in, uh, in our industry specifically, which is say media entertainment or social media in general. Um, so I think social media as industry has embraced AI or specifically ML as an application into almost most business processes, right? Um, which includes content recommendation, personalization, ads, we obviously know. Um, moving on to how to use AI and ML in content creation, how to make content creation more effective, how to even aid creativity with the use of AI. Um, and even moving to uh, AI and ML in conversation, uh, which we have started doing more recently and which is uh, really helping us uh, disrupt, the, uh, disrupt the creator economy in general. Um, so uh, Triller as a platform, I mean, um, uh, our vision is to basically create this uh, open garden ecosystem for creators uh, using AI technologies 
where it, they're able to um, distribute and monetize their content better and reach to their audience better um, uh, with specific applications of AI and ML. So if I were to summarize this, our trailer is all about uh, creating disruption in the creator economy, right? Yes. Uh, we will come back to this later with more details on what you're doing with smart technology. Uh, we were having a conversation, conversation earlier to this uh, panel discussion and Shrey was particularly very excited to talk about metaverse. So we will surely come to that. But before that, I would request Shrey to uh, throw light upon as to how uh, you are embracing AI and ML when it comes to your company and your segment specifically. Sure. So at uh, XR Central, um, see our roots or genes has been through gaming, right? So when it comes to gaming, uh, both AI and ML were the first applications of which were implemented, you know, so be it, you know, non-playable characters. So if you might have seen a movie called uh, Ready Player Me or, you know, a Ryan Reynolds movie also. So all of those actually talk about uh, virtual worlds or a lot of AI-based concepts are already implemented in, uh, in gaming as well as in, you know, XR or metaverse. The way we usually implement uh, these tech is again, very similar to what games also do, right? So it could be a character uh, which, which is not a playable one, but sort of takes you through the whole uh, journey. It could also be adaptive, uh, you know, basically how the player is playing based on that, it becomes tougher or easier, right? So, so those are the things which uh, we see as applications. Also, as we move, there would be a lot of, I would say, um, angles where uh, AI and ML would come in mostly to create spaces, right? So for example, our current metaverse platform is around creating DIY spaces, right? And that's one of the places where you would need AI and ML to sort of rapidly create those spaces. So that's, that's where we see quick applications, but I, I would say there are just so, it's just a, such a wide topic that it, you know, can't be covered in a, in such a short session. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, considering myself a less tech savvy person, uh, when it comes to gamification, I only can recall Mario as a game. Honestly, uh, taking a cue from what you said already, uh, I understand AI and ML have already uh, opened multiple avenues and possibilities to experiment and see what possibilities uh, can reach us uh, and to better collaborate with the, within the ecosystem. Uh, if I can come to Saurabh, uh, when it comes to specific segments, if integrated with smart technology are playing well currently, so if I were in your place, I would have said customer experience. So AI currently is basic, currently is doing well in space of customer experience in enhancing digital exp experience all around. Uh, in, in your opinion, what do you think? What are the specific space or areas if integrated with technology can do better? <clears throat> no, absolutely. So uh, see, customer experience is a very immersive term. Uh, everything is customer experience right, at the end of the day. Uh, uh, and again, uh, as a, you know, as somebody who deals with technology on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, it's, it's very important to understand that for anybody who's using the technology, it really does not matter what goes on in the backend. Uh, you know, you can call machine learning, you can call artificial intelligence, you know, you can call, you can give 10,000 names to the various tech stacks that you're using. But at the end of the day, the person who's using it on the front end, is only interested in what is the application and what is the benefit of using this application, using this technology, what am I getting? It really does not matter what is happening in the background. Now, and that's, that's customer experience, right? Now, anything which makes your life simpler, faster, easier, uh, which allows market expansion, which allows you know, expansion of general thought process, general uh, horizons in, in, you know, in any business, in any field per se, uh, is I would say, you know, how the, how technology should really work. And uh, uh, as long as that is happening, uh, of course, artificial intelligence is definitely playing a huge role in it because things for which you needed, uh, you know, for, even for simple things before artificial intelligence was, you know, kind of put into applications, uh, 
you were using or you were you were requiring a human being to take those to, those decisions for you now if those if certain rule based decisions are being made faster without any human intervention it definitely adds to the entire consumer experience you know, fr fr from a user's perspective it's pure magic right uh, you know when you go to youtube uh, and you've seen a particular kind of video and the next what, what you see next is very similar videos playing on your play stream it's magic in the back end what happens what does not happen as a user i really don't care right and that's the beauty of technology i mean it makes your life easier without you realizing that it's making your life you know without realizing the complications that go into it and you know that's that's where any application you take where where artificial intelligence is playing a role or will play a role in the future i think from a user perspective it's all about consumer experience it's all about the seamlessness of this experience i certainly can relate to what you just mentioned uh, coming to you rohan uh, you uh, talked about uh, digital uh, ecosystem uh, social commerce in a bigger way uh, connecting in a better way with creators uh, i would want you to throw light upon as to what are the challenges you are facing right now i understand there i mean you all would agree that uh, it has both the sides plus and minus as well so now can we talk about the challenges see the biggest challenge i feel uh, in context to am ml is uh, getting carried away with the method okay this happens a lot a louder if i can request you yeah can you hear me now yes yeah. so the biggest challenge is um, being carried away with the method which means that we sometime lose the sight of the end result or the objective we are choosing to apply ai or ml for because the process is so magical as he said sometimes so we are expecting a lot of magic in the tech or in the process we are using right uh, but sometimes it's incremental like the value is incremental specifically with ml right you need to learn from the results and if you're learn learning from the results even if the results are very small or incremental in nature when you hit scale they'll add up and show considerable results in terms of business results that you're expecting um so sometimes we get too carried away with the tech part of it the tech process part of it or exactly the um, the technology or the algorithm we are trying to create right uh, instead of keeping our focus on the end result we are trying to automate for right that happens a lot at least has happened with me um and and i think the way to uh, way to manage uh, this challenge is that um, we the, the optimal mix of um, ai ml is with certain level of manual input at least in our case right uh, and that's when it drives the best result right so you have to enable manual decisions not necessarily replace manual decisions that's what i will choose as a biggest challenge i i think uh, many of you would also agree that these are the guys who are uh, making a difference and uh, innovative disruptions on the technology end but uh, when we talk about on the other end being a consumer or being an audience we need to have a real connect what technology is serving to us as i mean as an individual customer as well as as a business enterprise as well uh, if i can come to you shrey uh, please tell us what challenges do you face i mean it is all about gamification uh, how is ml and ai helping you optimizing and streamlining and what are the challenges i'll uh, explain it with a quick example okay so a lot of times so for example we just did a fan experience for uh, for an ipl team right and a lot of people when they were experiencing it they realized that they wanted maybe more realistic avatars right one of the feedbacks which we got was that uh, from from a female uh, fan ipl fan and she said you know can we have more attire options right so which is which is uh, which is cx at an, at one end right it's consumer experience at another end and also at another end it's about how can you um, enable the processing on the on the phone browser so that's that's another challenge right and at another end how do you create it realistic or semi realistic by you can say taking the phone camera input in and making it very similar to let's say uh to let's say you right so so that i can Rosa, agree with this absolutely yeah. i would also have asked for you, for the same right. thing so so that's those are i would say uh, the challenges which we face 
on the non ai or human side of things of course it's i would say all technology companies would agree hiring talent in itself is one of the biggest challenges which we all face right so i think in ai and ml certainly you know just just this is one of the things which we have been working on so based on computer vision and all so yeah that's how sarab priman is uh, about uh, auctioning reverse auctioning or uh, if we, if i can say spot exchange uh, this was earlier a transactional real world uh, affair but now moving into a hybrid model or i would say digital world uh, what challenges do you face what are the major concern areas okay. <clears throat> so uh, let's let's visualize a scenario right so uh, i am sure most of us would have you know at least gone to a store uh, to pick up fruits and vegetables and you know the way to pick it up is you know essentially take it in your hands feel it smell it uh, you you basically buy from your senses you buy with your you know with your entire all the senses coming into play now that's that's at a consumer level and a store level now when you take it to a larger level how does the you know the supply locations of all of this produces uh you know geographically somewhere uh so for example a cardamom is produced only in kerala right but you you have cardamom uh, available everywhere how does the entire supply chain work uh, there are there are a set of people who are buying from the growers in kerala physically they are then uh, again doing a physical transaction with another buyer uh, let's say a wholesale buyer in delhi who is again doing a physical transaction with the modern retail guys or with general trade guys and that is how the 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 journey of a cardamom you know kind of reaches uh, before it reaches you as a consumer now imagine this entire physical transaction it takes days together now these are all perishable commodities some are highly perishable some are less perishable but you know the more time it takes and the more hands it changes uh, there is a staggering amount of wastage that happens uh, in this produce in fact as a matter of fact almost 40% of world's food produced uh, is wasted so you know you have enough to feed everyone just that you can't uh, you can't manage it uh, now imagine a world now this is how it works today imagine a world where you know as a buyer as a wholesale buyer i'm able to look at you know instead of being there physically present and trying to you know use my senses or my experience uh, to determine the quality i'm able to sit at my location and do a transaction just by looking at the surface quality that let's say praman has identified and given and because we are confident on our technology we are able to underwrite this this entire transaction saying that if it is not the quality that you received uh, that you wanted we'll do the price adjustment for you and this kind of completely opens up the market uh, a grower who was today only limited to selling it locally can look at selling it to a delhi buyer a bombay buyer a, a chennai buyer or whichever buyer a dubai buyer or an american buyer uh, from their location and this is the this is the power of technology right i mean you've you've literally created you've taken technology used it in a use case which was extremely physical in nature transactional physical transactional in nature and you've created the entire world as your playground uh, now and this is how you know you know we talk about farmers income we talk about all of those things i don't think none of that can happen until unless the market really expands and this is one way to do it and uh, this is what we do uh, you know for for pretty much all agricultural commodities well explained well explained uh, this has given me a, a a point a cue for a different perspective uh, experimenting Uh, when it comes to technology and ai and ml in some senses still new to the people on the other end uh, what do you think rohan is uninterrupted experimenting is the way to uh, take innovations in a right uh, way yeah i mean it's very important because see it's not it's okay to fail in this context Absolutely. but you have to fail Absolutely. fast and learn from it and then experiment again um anyways it's like design thinking i think is the latest trend in business management it is all about experimentation reiterating experimentation reiterating and i think in uh, in 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 case of ml implementations it's the industry had adopted it pretty well because that's the only way you can learn and then improve optimize and then improve your algorithms or the processes that you build uh using uh, uh for ml so i think it's very important and that's what we do just to add to it what you just mentioned when we experiment and 
or when we experiment and we get feedback, right? So how, how the, uh, this process works, uh, you get feedback. Did you notice any uh, shift in the customer mindset, uh, if I can say it this way? See, the, so, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, so in, I'll say it in context of, say, user experiences or experimenting in case of user experiences specifically. Uh, it's very important how you're recording the feedback so that you're able to generate insights which are actionable. So if those insights are not actionable, then your, uh, your experimentation is not really effective, right? Because it can give you a lot of insights, but if, if it's not aiding a decision, then there's no point. And mostly that comes with the reporting structure you're building, right? Uh, of various use cases in this case. Um, so if we do say user testing where we create uh, A-B test with various use case, uh, with a certain level of automation, uh, it's very important how do we report those feedbacks. So eventually it can help us take some decision. Certainly. Constructive feedback always helps anybody to reach to a, a better result. Uh, Shrey, coming to your most favorite part of the discussion, Metaverse, uh, what, what, what do you have to discuss about Metaverse when it comes to integrating technology in a better way uh, when it comes to singular business or individual business i uh, if i can say but when it comes to integrate it with the and collaborate it with the other businesses in the ecosystem or with the uh, consumers on the other end how is this space uh, performing so metaverse in general i know that it's, it's the current buzzword but it's not new right the games have been there there have been online games uh, with millions of players, right? So uh, in general, if you talk about online spaces and online games, it's certainly been there, right? Uh, yes, it's a current buzzword, but I think what's happening right now is enterprises are taking note of it and sort of implementing it in their ecosystems. Uh, that's, that's the place where we are also positioned, right? So our product primarily gives you a DIY platform where you can just like Shopify, right? You choose a given set of template and set up your e-commerce shop. Uh, you can come on MetaCube and choose a given set of templates from a given set of templates and create your space very quickly. And that's something which uh, he just mentioned that, you know, it's one of the design principles, right? Fail fast, then, you know, ship and all of that, right? So what we try and give as a platform is that you come in and you are able to create your own metaverse within minutes without knowing coding, right? And I think that in itself is a big enabler because uh, a lot of people have their doubts of what an online space could be, whether or not it might be relevant for their brand or not, and how social can an of, of online experience be, right? Also, you know, how, how and where can you access it? So all our experiences, the way we saw the user uh, research, when we did our UX research and we, we figured out that it's better to Roll it, roll it out to users on the browser. So there's no installs needed. So I think that's, that's where we are coming from. And that's, that's basically our definition of metaverse. I think globally, world over, if you see the definition of metaverse changes with each platform that they are defining it in their, in their own manner. That's how our definition is simple. It's platform agnostic, it's scalable, it's social. It has to be fun. People won't just come in to just just buy something and not, it not being social, right? Then it's just like any page, right? So that's that's where we're coming from. And now is the time it. I can certainly agree with all three of you that technology and precisely smart technology is uh, an enabler uh, right now. Uh, sort of, what do you have to say on metaverse? Uh, I mean, as a country, is India ready for a metaverse revolution? Uh, I mean, are we ready? to enter a world of robotics, augmented reality, virtual reality. How do you know you're already not living in it? <laughs> um, nonetheless, uh, I think, uh, I think technology is a, you know, uh, as a consumer, I don't know what will work for me, right? I mean, when somebody comes up with an innovation and presents it or puts it right in front of me and I start using it, that's when you realize that, you know, wow, this is amazing, right? Uh, uh, it works for me. It does not work for me. Uh, I think as, you know, as, as people, as laymen, uh, we are consumers and that's why we are called consumers, right? We're consumers of technology. Um, 
not everybody is a creator. And therefore, as consumers, you can only consume what's presented to you. So if there are applications which are presenting multiverse uh, or metaverse, uh, multiverse or metaverse, yeah, uh, to you, and you are able to consume that, uh, then you're ready. If you're not able to consume that, if you're not able to digest what's happening, uh, you know, around that technology, then you're not ready to consume. And I think uh, there are enough and more applications which are, you know, uh, which are creating this consumer experience. Uh, people are, and like I said, right, I mean, one of the biggest use cases is gaming. Uh, I can see, you know, for my, you know, uh, it's not about using technology to create a parallel universe in that sense, right? I mean, if I were to tell my buyers that, listen, this is all happening digitally, right? And imagine yourself in the situation, you were physically present, what you were doing physically, uh, trying to check the quality of the material that you're buying. Now you're able to do that digitally. It's, it's, it's to an extent, it's metaverse. Just, just considering metaverse as a word sounds very cinematic and filmy and fancy, just the reason behind it. But absolutely, I agree that uh, this is just the different process, different enablement of the processes that's, that's still going on in the real world. Uh, just before our final question, Rowan, would you like to add to something? Add to it something? Yeah, I mean, metaverse is very generic as a concept. So I'll give you a couple of trends, uh, which will be the most immediate applications or where will we see the, 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 the biggest user traction, right? Uh, first would be gaming, of course, because a lot of ecosystem already exists, right? The biggest requirement for creating metaverse experiences is um, having a lot of um, digital art, digital design or 3D design, which exists within the gaming community or the gaming industry already, right? Uh, but I think the next one after gaming would be um, sports and music experiences in general, right? Uh, because those are the kind of experiences um, which the fans generally want a more intimate experience if they're not able to attend that uh, in reality or in the real world. Um, and, and, and we are also trying to enable that um, for uh, for the artists that we have in our ecosystem. Um, and if we are trying to do that even with sports in US uh, right now. So I think with sports and music, like creating virtual experiences in sports and music specifically uh, will be the next biggest strength after gaming and metaverse. That's interesting to know. And this is a cue for me and all of us sitting here that uh, we are about to enter the sports tech world as well. Uh, just the final question. Uh, I would want to know your constant source of inspiration. Uh, what is your go-to mantra? Uh, if I uh, would say, I would say my go-to mantra is never give up. What's your sort of? Um, there are quite a few of them uh, that, that instantly come to mind, but I think- What's uh, your favorite? Yeah, so I was coming to that. So the biggest one is, uh, you know, possibly uh, uh, the, consumer centricity. Uh, I think uh, uh, that's, it, it kind of encompasses a lot of things. Now, as, as creators, as uh, entrepreneurs, you know, you're essentially making things not for your own consumption, but for somebody else's consumption. And I think the whole idea that you're building it for, uh, you know, you're, whatever you're building is going to impact a large number of people. And as long as you're able to keep them you know, make them the center of your universe. You can, you know, then continuously keep building out for them. And that's, that's a huge motivation. So customer centricity yep. for Saurabh and Rohan. So for today's discussion, I'll choose, uh, don't, don't be scared to fail, specifically in case of technology, because it's evolving. The landscape evolves so fast that, um, yeah, if you're, if you're aiming for perfection, or if you're procrastinating a lot in terms of building a technology, like you'll, you'll just miss the bus because things will evolve a lot very soon. So you have to experiment, try, fail, learn, and do, move on to the next thing. So for Rohan, it is, uh, it's okay to fail? Yes, it is. Shrey, what do you, do you have for us? It may sound cheesy, but our, <laughs> uh, our uh, mantra, go-to mantra generally has been to disrupt because the space we've been in, the, the kind of work which we do, it's very important for us to believe in ourselves and, and you know, have that whole vision in mind that you have to disrupt the space which you are in. So 
that's that's been the the mantra for us usually that that's what motivates us also to you know keep innovating and and all of that yeah so good to know this and uh, here i am connecting the my connecting it to my first point uh, there is only in my opinion there is only human intelligence that works behind smart technology and i really really appreciate all three of you as disruptors as innovators keep on disrupting keep on innovating this session has been a really uh, stimulating one has been a really uh, enriching one thank you so much for your time thank you so thank you. much thank you thank you